So for this video, I'm going to be discussing the whole idea about these rate determining steps. And so one thing that I kind of discussed before this whole break situation happened was the fact that whenever you have these multiple reactions occurring, most of the time we kind of ignore all this stuff. The main thing that us as human beings are actually really interested in is the end result. And so whenever we look at these actual reactions, we don't typically look at the reactions individually as step one, step two, step three. We typically look at them in the form of the actual overall reaction. And so whenever you actually start talking about these chemical reactions, you would assume that each one of these chemical reactions has their own rate. And again, that assumption is pretty safe because it is correct. But when we start looking at the overall reaction, the overall reaction are all three of these steps, again, kind of combined, ends up having the rate of just the slowest step in the process. And the whole idea can kind of be thought about as if you're talking about uh, normal, well, before all this happened, what well, used to be normal everyday traffic. If you're sitting in traffic and everybody's going fast, everybody's cruising right along, the reaction's going at a pretty nice state. But as soon as all of this fast traffic catches up to that one slow poke that happens to be sitting in the left lane, everything is going to slow down. Meaning the fact you can only go as fast as the slowest process will allow for you to go. And so when we kind of go through and start talking about these rates, the rate is always going to be dependent on the slowest step or the slowest rate out of all of these steps. And so when we kind of go through and look at this, if we look at these each individual steps here, we can figure out the rates of the individual steps or what we refer to as the elementary steps. And so for the first one, we can kind of look at this in two separate directions. And the main reason is because we're looking at a reversible reaction. And so the way that we refer to these is going from left to right, or the way that it's written, we call the forward direction, we're going to call this our K1, or our rate constant for the forward direction of our first reaction. On the other direction, we're going to refer to this as our K negative 1. Because again, still looking at the first reaction, but now we're going in the reverse direction. Similarly, we're going to call this our K2, and we're going to call this third one our K3. Notice K2 and K3, there is no negative Ks because again, we're only going in one direction. These are non-reversible reactions. And so if we want to write out these actual rates for each one of these steps, we can do so the same exact way we kind of written these out in the past. And so for the first one, as I kind of stated, we can write down two separate reactions. Let me grab a seat. And so for our first one, we can write our rate one, and please notice I'm talking about the rate going in that direction, is going to be equal to our K one times the concentration of our NO. But please note because we have NO, two NOs, we need to make sure that we're looking at NO squared. Whereas a rate going the opposite direction, or we're going to call this rate negative 1, is equal to K negative 1, or the rate of it going that direction, times the concentration of our N2O2. And so, for our second reaction, we have our forward reaction again. Now we're only interested in one direction, so we can kind of, again, kind of simplify our rate two is gonna be equal to our K2 times the concentration of our N2O2 as well as the H2. Notice this is a one-to-one -one stoichiometric relationship, so there is no powers on either of these relation or I'm sorry concentrations. And so we could do the same thing for our equation three, but because this is our slow reaction, I don't really care about equation three because it's not going to have influence over the actual rea or reaction rate anyways. And so, according to what I just told you, the overall reaction should de or be dependent on our rate e or rate two equaling K two N two O two times H two. And so this is okay for us right now. But one thing we have to kind of notice is if we are going to go through and actually kind of look at this entire reaction, one thing that is very specific about these rate laws is they can only contain the units in which you have reactants, or sorry, which are reactants. And so therefore, for this, it's okay. 
we have our N2O2, we have our H2, this rate law is perfectly fine. But the next step we have to kind of do is make sure that this rate reaction, sorry, rate law written the way it is, actually exists and actually makes sense for our overall equation. And so in order to do that, we have to do some fancy addition here. Luckily for us, I've kind of written this problem out, so therefore the cancels, like, cancellations are going to be pretty quick and painless. And so here, if we add all these up, our N2O2 and that N2O2 product reacted, so therefore those two can cancel each other out. Same kind of deal applies when we start looking at our, <coughs> when we look at our N2O here and our N2O there, we can cancel these two bad boys out. And so now we're looking at 2NO plus 2H2 will give us 2H2O and the N2. If we write this out, 2NO plus our 2H2 is going to produce our N2 and 2H2O. And so when we kind of go through and look at this, as I stated earlier, your rate law has to include your reactants. Here our rate law includes H2, which is a reactant, but our N2O2 is not a reactant, meaning the fact that this rate law does not work for this overall equation. And so the way that we kind of need to work things out is we need to make sure that our overall rate law is only going to include NOs and H2s. Luckily for us, we have these equations right here. And so, great thing about reversible reactions. Once they hit equilibrium, we know that our rate one and our rate negative one are going to be equal to each other. And so when we know that our rates are going to be equal to each other. We also know that the whole kind of constituents that kind of come after those rates are going to be equal to each other as well. And so, what we can do is rewrite this entire or ordeal up here. Let's see if I have enough room on the board here. We have our rate one. <clears throat> you can see them up there with the equal, so I'm not going to write them out again. So we have our K1 and no squared, which is our rate one right here, is going to be equal to our K negative one over N2O2. So now looking at this relationship here, as I mentioned, we have our N2O2 in the rate law we want to get rid of. We want to replace that N2O2 with our NO. And so when we kind of go through and do this, we can do this by simply rewriting this equation in terms of our N2O2. And so if we do this, then we know that our N2O2 is going to be equal to our K1 over our K negative one times the concentration of our NO squared. And so all I did here again is just divided my K negative one up to the other side. And so we're still looking at the same deal. So the main reason why I wrote it out in this fashion here, K1 over K negative one. Main thing you have to remember about these Ks is they are just rate constants. Same deal as if you have something like 3 divided by 2, you're still going to end up with a constant. And so K1 divided by K negative 1, we can replace this with a brand new K. Because it's still just going to be a rate constant. And so now we can actually take this whole portion right here, our K times the concentration of NO squared, and replace it all the way back up here to get a new rate. So now if you rewrite this, I'll even rewrite in a special red color for you. Now our new rate is going to be, rate of the overall equation is going to be our NO squared, sorry, K, our NO squared times our H2. And so if we look at this in relation to our overall equation, we have our NO, which is our NO, we have a squared, we have our H2, we have our H2, and so therefore everything kind of works out all nice and neat. And so we kind of go through and look at this, still not the same deal as <clears throat> mentioned before, your rate law is not going to be dependent on your overall law here. So if it would have, your H2 would have been squared. But it is still needs to necessarily have both of your reactants, and it cannot have any intermediates, can't have anything else that does not belong as a reactant in your overall equation. Hope that helps out.